I went a little overboard with this one. Way overboard with this one. Oh, and this was the only plaid I could find. My grandmother's old blanket. Um, I don't have a tartan. Hey, co-host. Where are you going, co-host? My co-host is departing. Um, but I did get a little carried away with this. Um, I've got a spreadsheet of, uh, five pages. It was originally ten, and I narrowed it down to the five pages, and I still could narrow it down even some more. Um, as I went through all this stuff, trying to decide what to do, I just grabbed everything, and then I went through it again uh, to narrow it down to what I actually wanted, and then I realized that I picked some other stuff that I didn't want, and it just it just got so out of hand. <laughs> this got so out of hand so quickly. So, um, anyways, uh, welcome to the Dealey's book series. It's nice to meet you. My name is Christina K O S T N A. This is where we read books and talk about books and looking a little disheveled this morning. Um, but, uh, I'd ask you to please help you watch uh, Star Trek Next Gen Recap this morning. And this is If Then. If you like this author, then maybe you like that author. And don't forget to, to tune in to uh, Flashback Monday, where we talk about all the books in this magazine. And we'll be talking about it quite a bit today. And welcome to If Then Highlander version. Listen, Missy, are you going to be my co-host today? You want to come up on the couch and hang out? Are you going to come over here and drive me crazy? So anyways, now none of these are as good as this one. All right, this one is the top prize. This one is the be-all to end-all. Would you get out of my books? This is the be-all, end-all. And we will see this again because this falls under two different categories. I will use this book. For another one that would you get out of my papers? Um, I will use this book for an I'm gonna do another one with time travel, and this will also fall into the time travel category. So if you like Outlander and all those Highlander kilts, and we have a little uh graphic novel here that we will talk about all those uh, uh hey, 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 hey. don't pull my papers out of there all those highlanders and a smoky 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 stop messing up mommy's papers i know you like papers leave my papers Smokey's got a paper fetish. She loves getting underneath papers. Loves getting underneath it. And she's going to kill my organization. What lack there is of my organization. Um, at Outlander. All those kilts. All that green stuff. And, um, so if you like this, if you like the uh, Highlander issue, that's what I'm going for here. I will tell you that a couple of Regencies snuck their way in. So I'm going to do this. Oh, this is good for... I am freezing. So this is good for uh, warmth. It's itchy as all hell, though. Um, so let's just get started. Um, I've got so much over here, it's unbelievable. Um, and I really don't... Hand. Now, if you were joining me earlier this year, we did, or I, I did, um, Beatrice Small Sky O'Malley series, and we ran through the whole series. And uh, so we've just got a couple here. I just pulled a couple um, that 
I thought would fit in this category. And I didn't look them up to begin with, but we've got the Captive Heart. It got four and a half stars. Um, Small ignites readers with imaginations with steamy stories teeming with historical detail. The machinations of war, church politics, and underlying passion. Her attention to detail and the ease with which she incorporates history into a sexy tale is why she's the queen of historical romance. The year is 1461. The winds of war rage across England, uprooting Henry VI court, including Alex Kivett, the daughter of Queen Margaret's physician. Alex's flight becomes weaker when a North Northumberland baron gains her hand for his cruel son. Duty to her queen and to her sickly widowed father forces Alex into a loveless marriage. But when her husband unexpectedly dies, Alex once again flees, this time to save herself. Escaping over the border into Scotland, she throws herself at the mercy of a dark and brooding laird, who, if she can warm his cold heart, might provide her everlasting love of her dreams. And I've got one more for Miss Small. And we'll probably see this again. The Border Lord's Bride. Four and a half stars. Readers could not ask for more. Small combines the perfect romance with breathtaking historical detail. A marvelous heroine, a dynamic hero, an exciting and colorful backdrop that sees with intrigue and passion. She never falters in her ability to give readers a steamy love story and a work of ground historical proportion. Duncan Armstrong, Laird of Dundalk, has sworn not to wed unless it's to a lass he truly loves. But when he needs a favor from King James, Duncan never expects what he's forced to pay in return. The taking of a bride he neither loves nor desires. When a Highland heiress, Ellen MacArthur, marriage plans are thwarted by a temp murder attempt, she has no choice but to beg the king for help. The cause for her urgent plea to surrender her heritage and become a border lord's bride. Oh. Okay, moving on. Victoria Roberts. This is actually, I just discovered as I was examining it, it's an advanced reader's copy. I haven't seen one of those in a really long time. Um, To Wed a Wicked Highlander got four and a half stars. Roberts has created the baddest ba boy of the Highlands for the third in her series. This action-packed romance has everything Roberts' friend adore. A strong heroine who meets her match as a to-die-for hero. Deception, betrayal, love, and redemption. To wed a wicked Highlander has all of the elements that make readers sigh with pleasure. Yes, ma'am. Sybil will do anything to prove she's just as valuable to the Mackenzie clan as her brother is. She'd go to any haunt, take any dare, but her father has a different sort of mission in mind. Marriage. It's simple, he explains. All she has to do is marry Alexander MacDonald and report back on his family secrets. It will be easy, he says, as long as she doesn't do anything foolish like fall in love. Ah. Next, uh, I need another pen. To to wed? No, what's it say? Mad, bad, and dangerous in plaid. That over there. Um, four stars. While not a typical page turner, Enoch does an excellent job of building sexual tension between an intelligent, high spirited Scottish lass and a more mature Viscount. Oh, it's a Regency. It, I told you a couple of Regencies poked their way in. High spirited Rowena McLaurie has come to the Highlands after a spectacular, successful debut season in London and has made it painfully clear that she's outgrown her girlhood obsession with Lachlan McTeer. 
That's just fine with him as he never had any intention of marrying the lass anyway. Yet how can he ignore the fact that one, the once and humble Winnie has become a very fashionable and extremely desirable young woman? Mm. Wait, don't write these down, I'll forget. One more. The Devil Wears Kilts. Uh, four and a half stars. A new series begins with a touching, humorous love story that the talented Enoch pulls off with panache. It's so easy to adore the rugged Highland hero as he meets his match in a very popular British heroine, proving a opposite to track, building in their relationship on witty repartee that heightens the sexual tension is just one of the ways Enoch makes the story memorable. The cost of secondary... The cast of secondary characters in, in, enhances the plot. With best of all, it's the delightful and utter marvelous deep insights. On a mission to rescue his runaway sister from the law of flowery comp compliments and a useless lot of satin-clad scandalags disguised by their snooty titles, Ranaf McClory, Marquis of Glasgow, has roared into British society like a storm across the highlands. But he's about to find out that satin has its appeal, especially when it covers the curves of Miss Lady Charlotte Hanover. Oh, one more. Rogue with a Rogue, four and a half stars. The latest in the Scotland Highland series is simply outstanding. This highly gifted author has blessed her fans with a tale filled with incredible characters of fast pace and snappy dialogue. I'm a serious person. I like series, I like the character progression in series, and the characters in one book are the backup characters in the next, the backup characters in one are the front characters in another. Aaron McLaurie is in London at his brother Ralph's behalf, Bet tasked with maintaining the peace between the McLaurie and Campbell clan to have signed their first peace treaty in 400 years. He is not fond of an arranged betrothal and manages to avoid his fiancée by asking a masked lady for a dance. Ah, she's your fiance. Uh, first of many, many with this lady. We'll see her again in a few different uh, genres. In bed with a Highlander, four and a half stars. In her trilogy starter, Banks demonstrates her outstanding ability to write a fast-paced, sexually charged, emotionally intense romance. Her portrayal of Scottish clan life filled with larger-than-life characters provides the ideal setting for, for book readers will treasure. Though she is the king's illegitimate daughter and quite wealthy, Marion Stewart lives anonymously in a nunnery when Laird Duncan McCameron's men abduct her. She realizes she used to become a source of additional funds and power for her half-brother to carry out a plot to kill the king. Marion is beaten severely and imprisoned because of her refusal to wed Duncan, but she escapes. A powerful warrior, Ewan McCabe, is searching for his missing son, Crispin, whom his men find protecting a wounded Marion. When Crispin tells his father what happened, Ewan vows to protect Marion. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are needy this morning, ma'am. So why don't you come over here? Uh, Seduction of a Highland Last, four and a half stars. The second book in Banks Trilogy shows her ability to write sexually charged, emotionally intense romances. Alec McCabe agrees to wed Riona McDonald, the daughter of a neighboring clan, to form an alliance but he's attacked and injured and moved by an unknown assailant. His horse carries him to a nearby cottage where Killy has been banished by her clan. She cares for Alec even when his brother Ewan comes and takes them both back to his home and she begins to fall in love with him. There's another picture spot right there. I told you I went overboard. Never Love a Highlander. Banks' final volume in the McCaig Brothers trilogy reinforces her reputation for writing sexy and emotionally moving Highland romances. 
This book provides a gut-wrenching, fast-paced story populated by highly sensual, wonderfully portrayed characters. To seal an alliance between their clans, the lads arrange for Riona McLeod to marry McCabe, her brother. Having previously rejected Alex, she is to wed Kaelin. Love has nothing to do with the marriage. Riona is more interested in gaining abilities as a warrior princess than being a genteel lady. Much to Kaelin's dismay, when her father joins forces with Duncan Cameron, a bitter McCabe enemy, Kaelin believes Riona is not involved, but a pawn in her father's shame. Schemes. Next up. Let's do the other. Beatrice Mall, why I've got it here. <clears throat> the Border Lord and the Lady, four and a half stars. Small transports readers to a place where remarkable characters, exciting historical events, and passion reign, perfectly blending realism and actual personages with a lively, sensual story. When it becomes apparent that her jealous stepmother hates her enough to harm her, Lady Cicely Bowen's father sends her away. As she grows up, Cicely returns Lady Joan Buford. When Joan is married to James I of Scotland, Cicely becomes a lady-in-waiting to the Queen. At court, she is wooed by two different men, sophisticated Andrew Gordon and the rough, rugged border lord Ian Douglas, who kidnaps Cecil before she can accept Andrew's proposal. I love Beatrice Bell. Okay. Now. You know who Sherilyn Kenyon is, right? You know she had an alter ego there for a while? Kenley McGregor. Born in sin. Though few can equal her skill with sword, Cal Caledonia McNeely fights an unfamiliar shiver when she's offered in marriage to the infamous Lord Sin. Though Callie fears his mysterious, unreachable stranger less for the dark whispers that damn him than for the heat of his touch. One more. Taming the Scotsman. No one can tell the hot-blooded Scottish lass whom to marry. But the much-feared man Nora runs to for protection may be more perilous to her heart than any unwanted groom. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry for that. There's no fancy editing in this one. Sorry. I'm not very good at it. We just got a few honorable mentions here. Hannah Howell. There's, there's like 20 or 30 of these. I only got a couple. I used to have more. Now I'm in the process of getting them all back. Hannah Howell, Highland Guard. Lady Annis McQueen has no other choice. The deception that enabled her to keep her hand, land safe is on the verge of being revealed by a cruel kinsman. To shield her young son from the sword and her people from devastation, she must turn to the one man she could never forget. Eh. Just do this. Highland Promise. Eric Murray was the youngest of his brothers, determined to to gain his rightful inheritance after 13 years of hitter, bitter dispute with his father's family. Starting out alone to comfort the tight-fisted kinsman, he encountered a beauty set upon thieves. When she begged for Eric's protection for herself and her infant nephew, Eric promised to deliver them to safety. Highland Destiny when Destiny brought Sir Balford Murray and his wounded brother down the same road as Maldi Kilke, she offered her services as a nurse even as she tried to deny the desire this dark-eyed knight had ignited at first sight. 
Highland Groom. Sir Dominic McEnvy deciding his illegitimate children need a mother and keep his and his keep needs a proper lady now stands before the altar with a genteel bride he hopes is too shy to disrupt his life or break his heart. The nuptials, however, are interrupted by the appearance of a flame-haired beauty carrying two babies, boldly claiming that she is his wife and the mother of his twin sons. Interesting. Oh. oh, I forgot that one. Okay. We've also got an echo in the bone. I brought it up because the magazine had a huge... spread on Diana Gableton. And I just thought I'd bring it up. Um... Her current release, An Echo in the Bone, continues the journey of James Jamie Fraser, a Scottish Highlander from the 18th century, and his time-traveling wife, Claire Randall. The path that led to a success of Gableton series is a tale in itself. Diana, for readers who might not know how you got started in your writing career, could you share a little bit of that? I wanted to be a novelist at a very early age, but I come from a very conservative background. Instead of encouraging me to write... My father cautioned me to work in a field where I could support my family. I put my writing aspirations on hold and went to university where I learned a master's degree in marine biology and a PhD in ecology. My dissertation was a 400-page titled Nest Site Selection in the Pinion J. Gummer Cephalus, or as my husband says, why birds build nests where they do and who cares why. When I turned 35, I thought to myself, Mozart is dead at 36, so I want to write a novel. And so she did. So, echo in the bones. Here, I'll just read that. James Fraser, former Jacobite and reluctant rebel, was certain of three things. About the American rebellion, the Americans will win. Fighting on the side of victory is no guarantee of survival. He'd rather die to have the fame. <laughs> Come here, come here. You're bugging me like crazy. Come here, come here. Yes, ma'am. I was trying to read a book with you. Yes. It's all your fault. Then why don't you go up here? Go up there. So where was I? You gonna sit down for a while? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, victory is no guarantee of survival, and he'd, die, he'd rather die than have to face his illegitimate son, a young lieutenant in the British Army, across the barrel of a gun. Claire Randall knows that the Americans will win, too, but not what the ultimate price may be. The price will include Jamie's life for his happiness, though, not if she has anything to say about it. Huge, thick book. This is the true Outlander book. Alright. Um. Another honorable mention. Uh, a Highlander's Temptation. She's always going off. How are you, ma'am? You like the blanket? Where did you get this stuff from? Alright. Islander's Temptation. Right there. Sue Ellen Welfender. Um, e um, four, four stars. Each, with each book, Welfender it reinforces her well-deserved reputation of one of the finest writers of Scott romances. She takes the classic Romeo and Juliet theme and creates a fascinating, intriguing story that will definitely stand the test of time. Darik Makana has long dreamed of a raven-haired beauty but never expected she would become part of his life. Lady Arabella Mackenzie convinces her father to let her sail to the islands of northern Scotland and visiting the Giving Stone, which grants true sweet love. Interesting. Fairy tale, too. 
I don't write these down. Okay. I, this might be a Regency too, we'll see. Yeah, it's a Regency, it snuck its way into my list. Um, four and a half stars. Maxwell tempers her lively sense of humor with temper propagancy in a captive captor tale of wild adventures and undying passion. Fans will relate to her three-dimensional characters and become totally involved in this fast-paced, highly crafted adventure. Highland Laird Gordon Lachlan is determined to reclaim the fabled sword of McKenna. With the sword, he will free his people from the yoke of British rule. But the only way to do this is to kidnap Constant Cameron and ransom her sword. Ransom her for the sword. Interesting. Are you still with me out there? Are you finding any authors in all these books? I've got two series over here that I gotta go through. Well, actually more than two series. Um, Rocky, you messed me up over here. I don't know where this goes now. Um, excuse me. Ah, the groom wore plaid. Um, four stars. Kaylin creates wonderful romances infused with the aura of Scotland. The fast-paced story is made all the finer by its intriguing characters. Maggie McCollum's dreams about her new fiancé aren't the romantic sort. It's not that she was bartered to Owen Macduff like a piece of property to end a clan feud. She's also haunted by premonitions of his death on their upcoming wedding day. Yet the exasperating Highlander won't let her call it off, even though his life and his clan are both in jeopardy. Let's see what happens there. So, does he survive? Do you think he survives? You'll have to read the book. Have you ever even heard of these authors before? Alright, we're going to go through these real quick. Um, Paula Quinn, The Scandalous Secret of Abigail McGregor. Uh, General Daniel Marlow, a knight and the kingdom's most desirable hero, would rather be on the battlefield than transporting a spoiled Highland lass. But Abby McGregor is unlike any woman he's ever met in a ballroom or in his bedroom. Sounds like more Regency. Sorry. Tamed by a Highlander. The night he left, Mary McGregor banished Connor from her life forever. Now her heart belongs only to Scotland as part of a secret alliance. She journeys to London in search of information, only to find herself face to face with the one man she swore she'd never trust again. Conquered by a Highlander. Lady Gillian Dilly is no stranger to temptation, cast out of her family for burying an illegitimate child. She's now the ward of a bar barbarian conspiring against the king. Her only desire for freedom for her son and for herself at any cost, even if it means making a deal with the devil. A Highlander's Christmas Kiss. A killer for hire is the last thing Gillian Grant ever thought he'd become. But being part of the Black Riders was his only way to survive. Now his guilt grows but day by day along with the desire for the beautiful brave lass nursing him back to health. I really did go overboard on these, didn't I? Charlotte Cunningham knows Patrick is in trouble the moment she sets eyes on him. Her only goal is to escape the possibility of marriage, any marriage, but as summer turns into sultry nights, Enticing her beyond reason, Charlie is forced to choose between the freedom she craves and the reckless rogue she can't forgive. Laird of the Black Isle. Allie McGregor wants is to return home to her family, and the Highland beast who captured her can go to the devil. Her plan to thwart him at any cost and win her freedom, but she never expected to fall in love. 
Highlander Ever After. Cena D. Armberg wants nothing to do with the unsavory McGregor, especially the fierce Highlander she now calls her husband. But the more she spends with the man she married, the more she sees his honor and courage and falls in love. I mean, you say warning, Regency's coming. Adventures of a Scottish heiress. Like many a Regency, Miss Ling Harrell longs for love but knows her duty lies in marriage. Still, when her father promises her hand to a desolate but well connected lord, she does the unthinkable and flees to Scotland. Not to Gretna Green, but to her family and to the castle where her mother had been so happy in this romantic land. She will discover her heart's desire. A oh. oh. couple of honorable mentions. Highlander, never kiss a Highlander, Michelle Sinclair. Elite maternity guardsman Hannish McBray is looking for a clean start. When his brother Laird of Forhaven Castle leaves the family holdings dangerous and unprotected, Hamish has no choice but to return and keep his clansmen safe, and when he does, he discovers that Fiona's painful memories have been replaced for the most passionate opportunities. How to Marry a Highlander A commander in the Tierney clan, Duncan is known for his far and wide uh, for his skills with the sword and his skills in seduction. His rugged countenance and arrogant swagger are a lethal combination for the woman who tried to tame him and fail until a mysterious vibrant tempts him with her wicked ways. Uh, desiring the Highlander. Born her stars. Once again, Sinclair demonstrates her ability to touch readers' minds and hearts, keeping them in form. Her deft hang handling of characters, emotional emotionalism, backed by her talent by present them in a plot that both witty and central is captivating. As a boy, Cole McTurney witnessed the killing of his best friend by an Englishman. Consequently, he's emotionally cold and hates anything British. Death and starvation have left the wild northern lands without leadership, and Cole is asked to become the laird and lead them to peace. Can he do it? Amanda Scott, tamed by the, tamed by the laird. Born to have stars. Continuing the tradition of a Scottish romance, the Scott has yet crafted another phenomenal story. The character jumps off the page, and the politics and treachery inherent in the plot suck you into life on the border from page one. Jennifer, the Baroness of Estelle, agrees to marry a stranger because her guardian claims she has no right to choose a husband. When she watches a troop of traveling minstrels perform her betrothal ball, she decides to have one last adventure before marriage. Since her maid's brother is a member of the group, Jenny feels safe joining them. As their travels progress, her abilities as a magician and singer garner respect from the troop. The first time she's accompanied by Sir Hugh Douglas, her betrothed much older brother, she has joined the troop under false pretenses. Jenny learns to trust you, and the relationship grows. Interesting. Another Amanda Scott. Border by Moonlight. I know my camera's pretty bad. I know my audio is pretty bad. Sorry. It's all I've got. Remember, I'm being held together by a binder clip here. Four stars. Border Moonlight. With knowledge and admiration for the Scots and their tangled border history, Scots crafts an accurate portrait of the small politics of the era and the vibrant people who lived, loved, and dared to keep the peace. It's well known that Sybil Cavus has a mind of her own. She's walked away from three grooms and is still unwed. Simon Murray, lad of Esho, has never forgotten or forgiven Sybil for leaving him at the altar. But when he finds her rescuing a drowning child, he saves them both, bringing the injured Sybil home. 
Sybil soon realizes there's a great deal more to Simon than face and form. Will she marry him? Let's see. Now, there's a trilogy here, and then there's a longer series. And I may actually do the longer series for uh, one of my series to do. Uh, right now, we're doing um, Alex James Patterson's Alex Cross series. I always have trouble with that. I don't know why. Victoria Thompson's Gaslight series and J.L. Ward's Black Decker Brotherhood. That's what we're doing right now. And a few others thrown in. So this is not the first. Oh, it is the first. Oh, that's good. I'm glad I picked it up first. Highland Warrior, Mona McCarthy. And we will... She has this other series that I'm definitely gonna I'm gonna do for the daily reviews. Um, the Exxon and McCarty's previous Highlander series continues in book one of the Campbell trilogy, which deals with the marriage of two people from feuding clans. She presents a unique insight into the concept of loyalty, justice, and love. Katrina Lemon's father is hosting the Highland gathering in hopes of finding a suitable husband for her and making an alliance that will reinforce the security of her, their clan. She doesn't realize that the laird who gave her aid prior to the James is Jamie Campbell, the privy counselor's enforcer. After the two clans have been feuding for years, Jamie successfully arranges a marriage to Katrina. Jamie has always equated justice with punishment. Just everything is right or wrong. Despite his and Katrina's strong emotion bond, their marriage is far from solid due to his rigidity. He needs to get past it. They're here somewhere. Um, just a second. Okay. Highland Outlaw. Four and a half stars. Continuing the excellent tradition of a previous Scottish novels, McCarty builds a wonderful romance set at a time when daughters were viewed as chattel and means for political financial gain. She presents an unforgettable tale of blossoming romance and passion that defies social views. From his first encounter with Elizabeth Campbell, Patrick McGregor is enchanted by her beauty and the internal strength she displays when she discovers her betrothal's perversity. He helps her flee the scene, never telling her his name. Later, en route to her uncle's castle, Cathal's coach is attacked by Outland as Patrick realizes she's in the carriage and acts as her savior. And Roman Blossom. Island Scoundrel, four and a half stars. Told in the present and through flashbacks, the conclusion to McCarty's Highland trilogy is a fast-moving, emotionally tense, and heart-wrenching love story filled with unexpected twists. Duncan Campbell, the lad's illegitimate, and Jean Grant's the Marchionese granddaughter fall in love and plan to wed when Duncan is called to the fight against the British. When the Scots are betrayed, the battle becomes a killing field, and Duncan casts as a traitor. Flees to France after learning both his father and Jeannie's grandmother will not sanction their marriage. Interesting. Um. What is this? Oh, Amanda Scott, Borderlass. And four and a half stars. Readers will be thrilled to see the characters introduced in Border Wedding return in a tightly written, deeply emotional love story steeped in the rich historical of the border. Scott uses use of real events and people enables her to subtly move readers into the character's mindset. On the day of the king's coronation, strong willed Emily Murray feels Sir Goth Napier's eyes follow her. Certainly Goth is attracted by her voluptuous figure and spirit, but she's vowed never to wed. 
When Glass realizes Amelie has unintentionally overheard a treacherous noble friend discussing his ruthless plot, when Glass is investigating, he moves to protect her, sweeping her into arms for a passionate kiss. Oh no, we were all listening to a conversation. We were just making out. Let's see. Oh. Cut myself off again. Oh, company has arrived. We leave for company. Highland Outlaw, four and a half stars. Continuing the excellent tradition of her previous novels, McCarty builds a wonderful romance set time when daughters viewed as chattel a means for political financial gain. She presents an unforgettable tale of blossoming romance and a possession that defies social views and brings on an era to life. Elizabeth, from his first encounter with Elizabeth Campbell, Patrick McGregor is enchanted by her beauty and the internal strength she displays when she discovers her brother's perfidy. He helps her with the flea scene, never telling her his name. Later, en route to her uncle's castle, Elizabeth's coach is attacked by outlaws. Patrick realizes that she's in the carriage and acts as her savior, escorting her to destination, but she doesn't realize that he's a member of the outlawed McGregor clan. Patrick's relationship with Elizabeth grows from one of respect to deep and everlasting love. Even after Elizabeth learns his identity, she's willing to marry him as a hand fest ceremony. When he's captured, the romance and excitement reaches a crescendo as Elizabeth takes control of her destination and Patrick. Highland Scoundrel, four and a half stars. Told in the president through flashbacks, the conclusion to McCarty's Highland trilogy is a fast-moving, emotionally intense, and heart-wrenching love story filled with unexpected twists and romance to make your heart sing. Duncan Campbell, the laird's illegitimate aunt, son, and Jenny, the Marchionese daughter, fall in love and plan to wed when Duncan is called to fight against the British. When the Scots are betrayed, this battle begins at Killing Field, and Duncan, cast as a traitor, Flees France after learning both his grandfather and Jeannie's father will not sanction the marriage. And I know I missed one. And I don't know which one I missed. Highlander Untamed, four stars. Her irresistible debut, McCarthy gives life to exciting, colorful times as Highland feuds. She infuses her novel with vibrant details and viable characters that make her mo your emotions run high. McCarty is destined to win fans who will wait and bated breath for the next book. Worry McLeod is a bold and powerful Highland chief with only one allegiance to his clan. He vows revenge against the rival McDonald clan, though duty demands a handfast marriage to Isabel McDonald a bride he does not want and has no intention of keeping. But Rory could never anticipate the captivating woman who challenges his steely control and unleashes the untamed passion simmering beneath his fierce exterior. Just throwing this in, it's a regency. Um... Karen Rainey, The Devil Wears Tartan. Some say he's dangerous, others say he's mad. None of them know the truth about Marsha Ross, the devil Ambrose. He shuns proper society, sworn to let no one discover a secret, including the beautiful woman he has chosen for wife. Uh, Jennifer Ashley. Right there. Sorry, it's not so good. The Madness of Lord Mc Ian Mackenzie. Four and a half stars. Oh, this is a Regency. Oh, well. Ashley's enthralled and poignant romance shows the people thought to be completely devoid of emotion only require the proper stimulus of another emotional response to unlift their subconscious buried feelings. By tackling an unusual theme a la Laurie Kinsley, Ashley 
touches readers on many levels. Ian, the youngest Mackenzie, has always thought of man. He believes himself unable to feel or understand emotions or human behavior. When he learns that young, wealthy widow Elizabeth Ackley is to marry, he considers a reprobate. He declares his beliefs about her intended and his own shortcomings, a man who feels nothing. Okay. Sorry. That didn't fit with what I was going for. Um... I didn't write down Elizabeth Boyle. To beguile a beast. In a crumbling Scottish castle, mysterious beauty captivates a wounded noble in Hoyt's third installment in The Legend of the Four Soldiers. Sounds like a Beauty and the Beast type story. It doesn't sound like... Desperate to flee of her protector, Helen Fitzwilliam takes her children to St. Elsdale's Monroe's castle, where she poses as the new housekeeper. Interesting. That wasn't what I intended, but that's okay. Uh, those. Um, I think we did this already. And... Oh. I didn't write. Well, there's a picture in here. I just can't find it. Sorry. Um, uh, seducing a Scottish Bride. Sue Ellen Wolfender. Four and a half stars. Scottish legend and history merge as Wolfender sweeps readers into a tale brimming with witty banter between a feisty heroine and a stalwart hero caught in a web of ancient curse. The added paranormal elements and sensuality turn this into an intriguing patron that has fans of Scottish romance will adore. After a second's wife death, Rowan McCrory the Raven refuses to bring another bride to Castle Dare, but he doesn't count on an old debt between his family and the Mackenzie to send Lady Giles as a bride. Does she survive or not? See what happens. Um, what's the other book in here? Let's go. Uh, Amanda Scott. Oh, wait. Uh, the Devil's Moon. Have you heard of these authors? Are you even familiar with any of these authors? Oh, looks like I'm wrong again. Devil's Moon. Scott continues to demonstrate her master mastery of Scottish romance as her skills are shown by the seemingly effortless manner in which she generates a gripping high tension romance within a complex replete with fascinating historical details and strong characters. So David Devil Armstrong is flabbergasted to discover the beautiful girl he has vowed to protect riding stallions stolen from him. Following their face to face encounter, Dev realizes Lady Robina Galston has grown into a beautiful young woman. Since her father's death, it's Rabina who has led her clans on raids to retrieve stolen stock. Though she will do anything to keep her land, she will not submit to Dev. Well, she does at some point. Another Amanda Scott. Let's see. So, I hope you found a few others. I hope you're still here. King of the Storms. 
uh, four and a half stars. Scott brings the memorable characters from her previous novels together in an exciting adventure romance destined to showcase her storytelling and love of history. Even though there are moments when the story slows, the vivid details of the search for both a Templar treasure and a Scottish stone of destiny, along with a love story, add to an exhilarating novel. As the youngest MacLeod sister, Sydney is a doing of dignity, grace, and courage. She is respected by the men of her family, her sisters, husbands, and clan. The captain, Sir Guilford MacLean, arrives on a mission to locate a long-lost Templar treasure. As a warrior, Gift expects to be obeyed, especially by a mere slip of a girl, but she doesn't. Ah. Another well founder. Let's see what this one says. Uh, to desire a Highlander. Oh, desire a Highlander. Four and a half stars. From the dialect, language, and legends to spot on characterization, Well Founder cat captures the Scottish Isles to perfection. Fans will adore this novel, especially the dynamic battle of wills between her spirited characters and unexpected plot twists. It has been five years since Lady McGillian McGuire has seen her betrothed, Donald McDonald and she dreads his arrival, but the man she steps off the boat is nothing like the man she remembers. He is a broader, prouder, and more handsome. To uncover what has happening on the outer islands, Rogue has taken on the identity of deceased Donnell, but he was unaware that his betrothed would be a woman who challenged and fascinated him. So let's see what happens there. Claimed by the Highlander, Julie McLean, four and a half stars. McLean ensnares readers with her powerful writing and emotional love stories and once again crafting a book to cherish. Her richly portrayed characters and intriguing fast plot combine a read that will leave you speechless with delight. This new novel reinforces her reputation as premier writer of Scottish romances. Well, Gwendolyn McEwen brother has been in the Far East for over a year, leaving her at Kinberg Castle, the land given to her family by King George in gratitude for the support during the Jacobite Rebellion. Angus the Lion McDonough grew up in the castle until it was lost in the Battle of McEwen's. He was banished from his clan and has returned to reclaim his home. Gwen's position, beauty, and independent attitude prompt him to request their marriage to unite the clans. Captured by the Highlander, four stars. McLean demonstrates her ability to write a powerful romance, smart, fast-paced writing with an interweaving of history and central make this an intriguing read. The character's sense of light is only surpassed by their sense of good and evil. Duncan McLean is hunting Richard Bennett, the British officer who murdered his beloved. When he slips into the enemy's fort, he discovers Lady Amelia Bennett's patrol, and he kidnaps her. All in love, Dewey. Okay. Uh, seduced by the Highlander. McLean concludes her Highland trilogy with an engrossing tale complete with a curse, kidnapping, amnesia, magic, and alluring brow. Highlander, known for her strong characters and up all night plots, McLean adds a bit of mystery to a story brimming with memorable characters. Once the Laird of War and the greatest seducer in Scotland, Lacken MacDonald's is reduced to hunting for the witch who cursed him. Now any woman he makes love to is doomed to die in childbirth. When he sees the red haired beauty in the stone circle, he's ready to beg or kill to get her to remove the curse. Interesting. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Pamela Clare. Uh, 
they were a band of brothers, their loyalty one another forged by hardship and battle. The bond between these Highland warriors, rugged colonials, and fierce Native Americans stronger than blood ties. Um, and it got four stars, and it's not a Highlander. It takes place in America. Oh, Lord. Did I mess up with this one? So McKinnon fought to, to fight for the British. Morgan McKinnon would no more betray the men he flees. Then slit his own throat, not even when he was captured by the French and threatened with an agonizing death by fire at the hands of the Abakeni allies. Only the look of the innocent, longing in his eyes of convent bred French lass could make him question his vow to escape. Okay. Now, some honorable mentions. Now, I'm sure you've heard of this author, and we will do this author later, but we will do her newer series, The Fae, uh, the, uh, the, uh, she does an entire series, and that's what took, that's what's back there, The Fae, the, um, Fae Fever, Feverborn, those, the whole Karen Marie Moaning stuff. But did you know that she started out with Highlanders? Jesse Sir um, Spell of the Highlander. Jesse St. James has got to get a life. Too many hours studying ancient artifacts has given the archaeology student a bad case of sex on the brain. So she figures she must be dreaming when she spies a gorgeous half-naked man staring out at her from inside the glass of an ancient mirror. But when a split-second decision saves her from terrifying attempt on a life, Jessie suddenly finds herself comforting six and a half feet of smoldering, insatiable alpha male. The immortal Highlander, with long black and hair, mesmerizing eyes, Aiden Black is treble with a capital T. Arrogant, intensely sensual, he is free to roam across time and contents in pursuit of insatiable desires. Oh, another one for our Highlander's time travel one. But we will do a time travel one soon. I am Dagan McElter, a man with one good conscience and 13 bad ones, driven to sate my darkest desires. Oh, this is this is another time travel. I remember this one. He lives in Manhattan. Enchanted by a powerful spell, Highland Land McDuncan McClare slumbered for nearly 500 years. So, oh, another time travel. My mistake. But these are all time travel ones. We will... Put these aside for the time travel one. So, um, our final one of the day is the one that I'm going to do. And I don't have them all. So I'm just going to go through them. Um, I'm going to do them for uh, one of my series I read. And I can't find the first one. Oh, here it is. Mona McCarthy, the Chief. This is a whole series, and this is a really good series. I'm going to do it as one of my series um, further down the lane. Uh it's like seven or eight guys in this group and they each have a book to themselves and they're each involved in um, finishing the war um, and getting, I think it's Sir Robert uh, the Bruce back together. Um, yeah, here it is. So scouring the darkest corners of the Highlands and Western Isles, Robert the Bruce handpicks ten words. Oh, so there's ten. I knew there was a bunch of guys. Um, to help him in his quest to free Scotland from English rule. So this is the first one, and we'll go through them. Um, the ultimate Highland warlord and swordsman without equal, Tor MacLeod, has no intention of being withdrawn into Scotland's war against the English, dedicated to his clan. The fiercely dependent chief answers to no one, especially not to the alluring new bride. And this is the kind that I was going for when I was doing the Highlanders. If you're still here, I hope you're still here. But this was the one, these were the books that I was aiming for. So I don't have them all. So this is book one. And I'm going to do the rest. Um, well, there was the one I was looking for before. 
Um, all right. I don't have two, but three is the ranger. Two is, it's the chief, then the hawk, then the ranger. And... I don't have Viper right now. So it's Chief, Hawk, Ranger, Viper, Saint. Saint. Magnus McKay story. And then it's the Saint, Recruit, Hunter, uh, here we go. Recruit is Candace Sutherland's story. And the Raider is Robert's story. And um, the Striker is Ian Striker McLean's story. And uh, the Rock is Thomas McGowan story, and there are 12 in these so far, and I'm going to get the rest of them, and I'm going to do a binge read of those, and I think we have finished. I missed a couple here somewhere, but that's enough. Um, so I hope you got some Highlander kill stuff authors out of here. Maybe you found one. Oh, I had the Viper in the book. Um, the Viper was before. So I hope you found some Highlander authors. Maybe you'll find something. Or maybe you'll just go back to uh, Outlander and enjoy those. They're thousand-page books. They're very good written. They've also got movies. They've also got TV shows. Well, the TV show. Um, but I hope you will all check it out. And please hit the like and subscribe. Let me know I'm doing a good job. Thank you. Oh, don't forget uh, Star Trek Recap was this morning. Don't forget Flashback Monday, where we talk about my favorite magazine. And, of course, my daily book reviews. Have a good one.